Almost half a year after the introduction, the ELEC Discovery Streamer server already had a few updates leading to clear improvements on those points I criticized on. Time therefore for another evaluation. If you watched my initial review, which you should do if you haven't already, you should know there were two things that I considered limiting to at least a number of people. The maximum 15,000 tracks and the lack of Rune Ready Devices support. Both are solved now. Let's start with the 15,000 tracks. The concept of Rune and thus Rune Essentials differs drastically from most other streaming systems since Rune Essentials adds far more metadata to your music and does it automatically. That metadata is of no use if not indexed properly in a speedy database. To achieve this, the Rune Essentials database is stored on a very fast SSD drive inside the discovery. The music must be stored elsewhere, be it on a share, on a computer, a NAS or, like I use it, on a USB drive directly connected to the discovery. When the music source is entered while installing the control software on either a computer, a tablet or smartphone, all music files are read and their metadata stored in the database on the SSD inside the discovery. The music files remain untouched but Rune Essentials will contact the mothership to see if it can find better metadata and if so, it stores it on the SSD and not in your music files. Therefore, some believed that the maximum capacity of 15,000 tracks was due to the size of the SSD drive. It was not. Rune most likely chose to limit the maximum number of tracks to ensure very quick operation. After some more development they might have managed to further optimize the computer code and thus making the system faster. This opened the door to managing a larger database so now the maximum number of tracks is 30,000. I saw comparable developments with other manufacturers, although keeping a system with this amount of metadata must be harder. Nevertheless, they managed. Let me show you how quick the system is. As you can see, there are almost 30,000 tracks on the system. Let me go to the album view and sort on album name. In a moment, I will type SGT to search for Sgt. Pepper. Now, don't blink your eyes. I will start typing now. As you can see Sgt. Pepper is in the top left corner. I didn't speed up the screen recording, it's just as fast as it is. Will further improvement of the code lead to further expansion of the number of tracks? Let me clearly state that neither Elac nor Rune have made any statement about this, but I think the hardware might be capable of handling up to 60,000 tracks without reduced speed. Whether that will be implemented I can't say. Another thing is whether that's really needed. I have done some keynote speeches on Rune and Rune Essentials over the last month and when I thought of it I asked my public who owned more than 2000 CDs. That's about 30,000 tracks. Of the roughly 150 people I asked, only 4 raised their hand. Most people have less than 200 CDs, but still, if you do have more than 2000 CDs or plan to have that amount in the coming years, the full room version on a fast computer and driving a proper DA converter would be a better choice. As I have told in the initial review, Tidal is fully integrated in Rune Essentials. This means that you can add albums from Tidal to your Rune database as if you have those albums yourself. But if you play that album, it's not played from your hard disk but is streamed directly from Tidal. One of the viewers understood this and asked me if he could use the discovery just to play Tidal. And of course that's possible, but if he then could play it over his micro-random network audio adapter to his AirDAC. 
Initially that was not possible since the release firmware did not support the Rune Ready protocol. But that has also changed as I will show you here. Let's first go to the settings menu and select the audio tab. Immediately you see I have four Rune Ready devices in my network. A HiFi Berry Digi Plus board on a Raspberry Pi running the HiFi Berry Rune Ready software, an SOTM SMS200 network audio adapter, an Aurelic Altair Streamer DAC and a Sonora Micro Rendu network audio adapter. Just clicking enable and naming them was sufficient, although checking the settings can't hurt. Now let's get back to the opening screen and choose the output device in the lower right corner of the screen. You can now see that all output devices are not only selectable, a line drawing of the chosen output is shown in the lower right corner. In case of the Aurelic Alta, the volume control in Rune Essentials controls the volume control on the Alta DAC and the infrared remote of the Alta also controls the playback of Rune. Play pause and skip tracks just work as if it was a CD player. When the review of the Altair is ready, you will see a link appear in the top right corner of the screen. It is a good demonstration of the Rune Advanced Audio Transport as used in the Rune Ready protocol. A third edition is Internet Radio. It still is rather simple and a more sophisticated way of adding radio stations will be added on later. The current version requires you to find the link to the stream of the station you want to add, go to the internet radio in the main menu, click the add a station button, paste the link in the URL field and click add station. You can fill out a number of info fields for your convenience and even drag in a logo and you are set. From now on that station is only one click away. Indeed, selecting your favorite stations from a list is more elegant and will be implemented. But this will do for now. Where will this place the discovery? Well, let's start by mentioning the Rune software again. I yet know of no colleague in my country that doesn't use Rune as their default player in one form or another. If you want to try it, there still is the code at the end of my Rune review on the hbproject.com that will grant you a two month trial of the full version. Whether that code will still activate Rune in 2017 I can't say, but I'll try to convince Rune to elongate it. Now Rune Essentials as running on the discovery does have some limitations like now about 2000 albums limit, no support of DSD and no composer browser. But it does have the same look, feel and speed. And you still can search for composers if you like using the search or focus function. Then the CE device experience. Although almost anything with a plug is a computer in disguise, the discovery doesn't feel like one. For one, it's silent, no fans and no noisy hard disk. It has no buttons, knobs or other controls. It is controlled using a computer, tablet or smartphone or all at once. Computers might be any modern Windows or Mac desktop or laptop. For smartphones and tablets both Android and iOS are supported, but you do need relatively modern gear. Check the RuneLab site to find out. I already found the discovery with the initial firmware version a steal. With the added features it's even more. Imagine I have used it with a 20,000 Euro Meridian Ultra DAC over the SOTM SMS200 network audio adapter, having it perform really optimally. So if you have a good stereo that deserves a good streamer, or have a top of the line high end super duper setup and want no computer trouble, I can only recommend the discovery. If anyone knows of a device that would be a better choice at this money, please let me know and I will try to review it. Now or in the future. So if you want to stay informed, subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. 
If you have a question, please post it below this video, but please don't ask me for buying advice. See my about questions video to find out why. You find more information below this video. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel through Patreon and tell your friends on the web about it. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the hbproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.